Hi, everybody. Brad and I are here again today to do the Ascension series. And we're also doing a meetup group called Mastering Ascension. So um, that's a whole lot of fun. And we'll talk more about that. But how are you, Brad? Hey, great, honey. Wow. Loving this Ascension, right? Sometimes not so much. <laughs> I know. Sometimes not so much. I'm sure there are a few people like myself just recently where the sleep is hard to come by. And then when you sleep, you don't feel like you've slept at all. And then others like we're having in the Ascension Master, the private signal chat, like I've been sleeping amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and they're just having incredible lucid dreams. Anybody who's watching this, make sure you write down your dreams or you share your dreams with mm -hmm. close friends and confidants because they have a lot of meaning right now. What's do. going on? Yeah, yeah. And uh and if anybody wants to know relatable, um, I have barely ate in seven days. Like I've just not been hungry, and then my body hasn't withered away. And I went out yesterday and I had the biggest workout in months. I just, and I have barely ate. I had like three potatoes, three boiled potatoes and two eggs yesterday. That was it. You know, so oh. incredible. Okay, stuff yeah. Like, yeah. Right? Everything's wow. shifting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Definite wow. weird eating habits I've noticed for sure. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Mm yeah. And when I look at stuff like, hey, let me have that great, yummy buffalo burger. It's 100% great red meat. We know where it's raised. It's organic. It doesn't have any of those things that go in the meat um keeping it very copacetic here for our terminology for the platforms we're on yes and then it's like yeah that looks amazing like i'm just not hungry weird mm -hmm. drinking a ton of water like, that's really good. spring water yeah and coconut water like by the gallon and still not being fully hydrated, hydrated. so lots of energy running yeah yeah, there's so much energy running through us right now. And I kind of equate the parallels almost to like a rocking boat. So oh, yes. your body's kind of like, Ooh. I know when it first started, the parallel shifting yeah. um, and separating, I was nauseated. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And weird stuff. things in the next. <laughs> Wild, eh? It is well, cool. Wild. So what are we uh, covering off on this one? Okay. Oh, we, we didn't prepare anything. We were totally winging it, everybody. <laughs> kidding. No, totally we're not kidding. Welcome it. to the Ascension Series. Welcome to the yes. Ascension Series. Yeah, we're honored to have you all here. Mm -hmm. We are. So I had a download in the middle of the night, and it had to do with Mr. T. We all know who Mr. T is. Right. And they're always talking about Mr. T playing 5D chess. Yeah. So 5D can be two things. It can be dimension or density. So at the beginning of when Ascension was coming into my head, I thought, well, we're just going to get to fourth density positive. Okay. Fourth density is going to go away. So third density and fourth density are going to go away. And we're actually going to get into fifth density, which is the same density that the ETs live in. So when will we be there? I think we already are, to be honest. We no. just can't see it yet because our brain is not ready to accept. Yeah. So it's kind of like... Uh ships of cortez you know i remember hearing about that a long time ago mm -hmm. and cortez ships came in the conquistadors but the natives couldn't see the ships you know until you got an agreement on it and then we went oh yeah it's there with an agreement on the sky right now or other things and by the way animal communication um i had a show with somebody who's an animal communicator this morning mm -hmm. and then you already that i had a crane on the deck this morning 10 feet away from me where i'm recording this right now ladies and gentlemen and uh, as a reiki master if anybody hasn't tuned into these shows been doing this for nearly 10 years in reiki not the shows for 10 years um 
I, a few months ago, I had an eagle swoop right down here, grabbed its snack, ate its snack, and then some eaglets. And that was amazing signs from spirit. And now a crane. And you, if you saw the size of the deck, honey has seen it, you know, two stories up above the treetops in a crane. I mean, this is a crane where they either hunt in fishing ponds and lakes or oceans. And standing on a shore, it's a shorebird. And it's up here on the deck. And it's not only just on the deck itself, it's on the railing. Kind of like a dove would perch itself on a railing. Yet a crane is up to 50 freaking pounds. It's huge, mm -hmm. right? A long neck like a, sw a swan or a flamingo to get its prey. And so looking up that spiritual sign as it relates to everybody in fifth dimension and fifth density, I didn't realize this. The crane is the oldest living prehistoric bird, which is still around now. I would think maybe bats, but a crane. And so just a beautiful, delightful message from creation. And in the time that I've spent with some native cultures, which hasn't been a lot as much as I prefer to have had, but you know, everything in is sentient life and everything has its message for you and vice versa, you back for it. So as Honey and I go through in this Ascension series, we're focusing right now on the 5D and then a message or two from Mr. T. Um, it's really important for people to realize that there is more outside of our previous awareness that our soul remembers and our spirit guides can tap into. And th they're kind of like our A-team, right? You know, the special team, if you will, Americans like football. Okay, being a Canadian, you know, all right, put it on hockey, right? You know, put your, so you ask your spiritual A-team a for assistance. You can ask your angels and guides and elementals as well that manifest. And some of you have had amazing previous lives, like dragons, fairies, elementals, water pixies, you name it, um, previously. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a nice way, I think, to set the tone where I went off on that tangent. Um, as we're about to talk, you're about to convey some stuff from Mr. T and its relevancy to today. Yeah, so Mr. T basically was just giving us that clue. So the biggest clue that I got when I woke up was the 5D chess game. And we're actually in the middle of a chess game here. Um, another thing that he talks about is light. So he actually brought up light therapy at the beginning of the illness, the dreaded illness. So um, he brought that up and he talked about it. And it's actually been proven that the light can go inside the body, ultraviolet light, and basically fix things. Yeah. So, you know, he had a lot of stuff that he was saying, and that kind of feels like a prereq to a med bed to me. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I've been very fortunate to have one of the co-inventors of the plasma med beds, which are commercially available today around the world in healing centers that people can go to. And he talked about um, it's based on Tesla coil technology and Tartarian technology and uh, being very selective in my words here for one particular platform when people are viewing this on and it's not Rumble. Rumble, we can be a lot more open. And uh, what this wonderful gentleman uh, had said is, you know, you're, you're allowing certain harmonics and frequency of light into the body. Now, if anybody has done any type of energetic healing, whether it's Reiki like me, right? What is Ray? This is the ray of light, right? Reiki, you look mm -hmm. at Qigong, right? Qigong also has that nice harmonics to it. And we light therapy and sound therapy all have different resonant frequencies on the spectrum, like a Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi and in and in, in a cell phone tower, you know, on the light spectrum, we could see it, but it also resonates a harmonic. So everything is all together. So to hear Mr. T mention that and um, that dreaded illness, if you turn it around and spell it D-I-B-O, that 
spells out a word in Hebrew called divok. And when you look at the etymology of that word and what it means in Hebrew, it means the demon within. So, so in Hebrew, it's demon possession, but they turn it around and lock down the world. Uh -huh. Mr. Yeah. T's talking about go from dark to light. Where have we heard that before? Yeah, and I bet that that therapy would help with parasites too, because they're that's a little nasty thing, which is mm -hmm. where everything comes from is parasites. But let's share some pictures here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please do. Yeah. So I want to talk yeah. about the difference between 3D and 5D. So see this little middle part of this plant? That's where we've been in that tight, really dense area. And now we're moving out into these outer petals. So we're gonna have more room for ourselves to expand. Yep. And the brain is what really needs to expand. So instead of in the middle, we're gonna be out on the edge. Well, it's like you look at um, you look at a lotus flower and the lotus flower blossoms. We look at any flower, we look at it blossom and expands to the edge. And mm -hmm. one of those images um, uh, you shared reminds me of uh, a sparkler or a firework that where it spins really fast in the middle, but as you get to the far edges, it throws out, you know, with beautiful, vibrant rainbow colors. And this oh, is this just one. such a incredible imprint of creation right yeah uh -huh. that kind of looks like ships yeah there you are look at this you know like seashells yeah know, the sponge in a seashell or a conch and you want to blow a conch and there you go as well right you look at um, um coming back from Lemuria, as michael jaco had said on the first show he and i did he goes you're an old soul from Lemuria," and when you look at the cultures that are still today around oceans, you know, signaling with the conch shell, the harmonics which come out of it are so beautiful. And you have that Fibonacci type sequence in nature here. And Fibonacci, as I was asked in our live, was it last week with our Ascension Mastery members, when we do our live Q&A each month, asked about the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence to life is an infinitesimal sequence. If anybody doesn't know Fibonacci, you take one and one is two, two and two is four, four and four is eight, eight and eight is six, is 64. And you go from there, right? It keeps doubling and doubling and doubling. And it never ends. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. or, sorry, eight and eight, 16, 16, 16, 32. Sorry, I was kind of doing the exponential effect. So, so it never ends. It's infinite. And then you look at this creation and this signal of it and how beautiful it is. And for me, this also reminds me of a quantum entanglement when I had first saw some stuff that Nassim Harriman had brought out and I went through his quantum physics course. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. And I think I have a picture of kind of what that looks like. Hopefully I'll find it. But this one reminds me of souls. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. have these little points of light. So we've been in this kind of really tight area and now we're moving further and further out and as the mind lets us do that we're going to realize that we're actually kind of in this kind of an area really so we're in a grid and the grid patterns can either be like this or they can be like this but the astral plane is basically a place where things are being built with light. Yeah. So well, everything returns to this is so beautiful, right? There's the flower of light. Mm -hmm. And the closer you get into the middle, like we you've been sharing, honey, you know, it, it you have more density impacted but as it expands whether you take for a butterfly for example right well it's a caterpillar in a chrysalis what's a chrysalis well chrysalis crystalline 
So yeah. you take something that is in one dimension on land, can't fly, right? Turns around, takes a few moments to hibernate, and then it expands and it has this interesting ascension. It goes through naturally. But in order to do that, it has to bring everything in real tight. And then it goes off you are. And now here you are as a butterfly manifested. And yeah, you can walk on some things, but you're also flying and you have spread it. I think that is just one of the beauties that you have for nature to express itself to which we can all see and wonderfully experience in everything. Yeah. And the, the light, look at this, the sun, right? When the sun rises, whether it's one sun, three suns, we're talking about is when it when it rises it's a pinpoint of light and then it's expansive and then as that light goes back to a pinpoint at the end of the day and you have that beautiful moonlight that expands then across it real moon fake moon honey and i aren't going to get into that right now no you know you do what this is all about though is you have this expansiveness that the universe is always there in this gorgeous expansive existence on different planes and that's where we are in the right. 5d now different planes and eventually we'll understand it like it's really hard to really grasp right now but it's getting easier and we'll all get better at it but basically everything's a fractal of another fractal so if you think about um, the ant beings, the beings that look like the insectoid, and that's the ETs, we also have insectoids here. We have little ants. We have um, praying mantises. So that's the fractalization that goes on. So if you're going to see it above you, you'll also see it in another area below you. And we have this massive field that we actually create. We're magnetic. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And it goes out exactly like that. And it's been photographed in from Kulin photography to other types of work photography. And there's probably a few that I'm missing mm -hmm. where you can see life force around everything. This is your Jedi life force, right? That that has been brought into our conscious awareness through film from there and yeah. and this this beautiful radiance around everything and anybody who has worked in energetic healing whether it's hands-on hands-off healing quantum entanglement you know there's just such symmetry in poetry to nature and nature comes from who right the greatest omnipresence of divinity the all-knowing father and mother, the creator of light, source. And every, every benevolent culture, whether it's in our known history or the hidden, has shared that. Mm -hmm. And we know belong to this incredible aspect of, of this beautiful kaleidoscope of woven tapestry yeah which created for us and our heart center right you, you know about the heart math the heart rate coherence you know it's oh, a, yeah. over a hundred thousand times more powerful if a thought becomes a thing well what happens from a heart center when you send love out to the world and and then what happens when we all get in coherence with each other in a in a community and in that community we are all an agreement to something you agree on peace, love, and joy. How much more powerful and enjoyable would life be if you have a community of hundreds or thousands of souls around the world who agree to peace, love, and joy, and then they support each other, like we're fortunately seeing with the folks that we're involved with. And now you have all of these souls who sit there and go, that 3D system that sucked your soul time, energy, and money, uh-uh, we're up here as a chrysalis, a butterfly spreading our wings. If we want to go walk, 
you know, we'll get out, maybe we'll go walk on the ground again, but we prefer to kind of fly around and check out things and hang out with the bees and see the, how the pollination is going and be part of this radiant, vibrant culture called Earth. And then yeah. eventually go to the stars as a result of that and then maybe manifest that up here from our little Merkaba energy. Yeah, so everything is a toroidal field. And like Earth, I don't think hardly anybody thinks Earth is a ball at this point. Um, but it has a heart and it does look, you know, like it has all these layers that come out from it, all these energetic layers. But we've made them solid. So we've made those layers solid so that we can stand on them in our physical body. Um, but it's just really a cool thing. I found a lot of really cool pictures today. But yeah. everything is a toroidal field. And that's how we operate. Like, this is how we look. Our energy looks not only here, but when we're in the astral plane as well. Well, I have dragonflies flying around me right now. And there were two blue jays that flew past earlier. Oh, I love that. Your, it's rare where I am ever to see blue jays in two of them. They're my yeah. favorite. So yeah. this is quantum entanglement. Mm. Nice. To me. And yeah. this is what we don't want. We want to say, okay, we want to break those contracts for this. Because this makes it harder for us to build and harder for us to expand. Yeah, it's hard to make a loaf of bread when it's all tied up like a pretzel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you want this. No. Yeah. And that's bioresonance. Look at that beautiful. Again, that goes back like a flower of life. And it it needs to nourish itself in order to share, you mm -hmm. know, because it's got half empty or half full. Well, let's make sure it's always full because then there's enough for everything. And that bioresonance that we see in trees and space. And if anybody has ever known the study of the secret life of trees, I mean, they will sit there. And if one area of a forest receives more rain than another, the root system in a forest will make sure that there is an even distribution of water and hydration for the forest. We're not just speaking about, hmm, like an aspen where we have the aspen trees, right? And it's like, well, the whole ecosystem of aspens is one big tree. We're talking about the whole forest, all different flora and fauna together in a cooperative community to move forward, to take care of itself, which is the basic fundamental essence of nature is creation and evolution and uplifting itself and aspiring to be better, which is incredible. It is, it's really incredible. Mm -hmm. So everybody has this field and it doesn't matter whether you're a bumblebee or a tree mm -hmm. or a human. Mm -hmm. um, so, and some people you notice that they're more magnetic than others and it's because they're being themselves. Well, bumblebees, we talked about 5D, right? Fifth dimension and fifth density. Bumblebees are interdimensional. How many yeah. times have we heard that from the science that's proved it? And right now, in what's known to all of us for millennia is honey from bees does not go bad. We're going to pasteurize this thing. Mm -mm. No, thank you. In, in ancient Egypt, it's all written that instead of gold or silver, it was the quality of honey that was the mechanism of currency they would trade in the markets. Honey, because of the profound effects, including the Himalayan beekeepers, right? And you look as well in New Zealand with Manuka honey and the incredible effects and the up upshift and vibration just by having it on a wound to heal a wound, create gash your finger, some natural honey on it. You know, maybe just lick it with your own saliva, get some of the stuff out, lick with your own saliva because your DNA is very powerful, very much like germinating a seed, right? Before you plant your seeds in the ground, 
nature will know what you need more if you put those seeds in your mouth for a minute or so and yeah. then you plant the seed in the ground for that food to then nourish you it knows what you're deficient in because you've programmed that seed how incredible is that and now in the fifth dimension and the fifth density the manifestation comes in so much sooner as you're calling it in from a heart-centered space divine masculine and divine feminine divine lines and lioness as i always say in open the show right and that equal balance is struck between there there's no too much polarity over here on a masculine side or a feminine side no it, it's it's even and it's supportive because that nature is in balance for con constant creation and peace love and joy abundance yeah ultimate it is and we're basically going into a time where we're going to learn this incrementally faster and faster how to do it yeah, because it's like, already there we just don't see it yet we're like those natives that can't see the boat quite yeah. yet mm -hmm. so we are gonna get it and i'm gonna put um melina actually has a class on that too so i'm gonna put that below because you can also program the seeds in the palm of your hand and that comes from anastasia as well yeah. it's very cool stuff that it's like those books took off and now they're taking off again. Yeah. And we'll be talking, uh, talking a little bit about that in our next Ascent yep. series, um, Becoming Superhuman. And not to coin the phrase from Dr. Joe Dispenza, I mean, this is actually our innate nature, which has been deprogrammed, detuned, suppressed, and oppressed by virtue of that, because it goes back to a biblical sense Again, I don't attend any church. I am my own church. You are your own church, mm -hmm. ladies, and, and your children are their own church. If you choose to go to a community and hang out there, that's awesome. That's awesome. No problem with that whatsoever, right? It's of the benevolent. Yet when we look at being superhuman, you're tapping into your supernatural abilities because in the Bible, back to the Bible, in every iteration it is, that God, the greatest omnipresence of divinity, the all-knowing father and mother and loving, created a man and a woman to have dominion over the land in God's own image. In the beginning of each Bible, it says, and God spoke. What is that? That's abracadabra. That is speaking into existence, a manifestation. So beautiful, right? Yeah. It's it's been in front of us all time and now that the programming and the societal conditioning of depressing our innate nature of superhuman abilities is here so that's going to be our next show and look to mr t uh, we also mentioned 5d chess so i think you should point that out before we wrap this session yeah up, what do you think? let's go back to the 5d chess and i want to just show this picture again um that grid picture. Great I can find it. So we're going to just like toggle back. Right yeah. Let's go. So this, think of this as the chessboard. Mm. Because this is what we have in the astral plane. So if you're a grid worker, you're working on grids like this and grids like this. And you're also working in famous B form on the hexagon because a hexagon will actually reform if you melt the honey in water. It will reform as it cools at the bottom of the pan. So honey will reform its structure. So the hexagon is one of the most like sacred shapes. Yeah. Yep. Sacred. So it's so thank you, Mr. T, for the 5D chess. Indeed. Yeah. It's like yeah. straight out of peace. Yeah. And just yeah. enjoy this time because really joy is like 5D as well. Joy and happiness and taking care of your vessel, your body. 
your spaceship here on Earth is graduating from being a spaceship to being its own soul group. So. As Honey mentioned in our, in our uh, it is, in, in our Ascension Mastery membership, the links are below here. Mm -hmm. You know, you're invited to check it out. There's a seven day trial offered. That allows you to, because each month we do live Q and A's with this amazing community of ascending souls. And this is a community from South Africa to Argentina, Peru, Sweden. We have five incredible souls in Sweden, you know, and Norway through to New Zealand, Australia. And then of course, you know, North America, honey in America, me being a Canadian. Um, so it's all, all points covered and we're so grateful for that. And the key thing is you on that seven day trail, you get to have access and sample the community and see if this is something for you. There's also another package. And what Honey and I had completed was a trinity of recordings called Be Your Own Nasara. We held the very first Be Your Own Nasara 60 minute session, which involved light language, light codes, uh, health and wealth grid activations and intuition expansion um, Reiki, guided med meditations, and the cosmic consciousness flow and cruise, which allows you to benevolently say goodbye to friends, family members, or peers with grace in the etheric realm, and then heal any of those astral level bonds with grace and transmute it. That's no longer serving you, as well as anything that you might have experienced in your life that might be holding you back from becoming who you were meant to be as a soul in this lifetime. And so with Be Your Own Nasara 3 was our final recording where we've kind of bookended it and brought it all up. That's 60 minute recording. And if you do the package, which is you get the recording, plus then you get into the monthly membership. What I'm, we're gonna say to you now and encourage you is when you get the package and you, if you're ordering it right now and registering, then over the next seven days, listen to that one hour three times. Take a day off between each listening to it, right? And there's active listening, but most people find a little part every now and then they may kind of fall asleep or check out. And we're also talking, like I mentioned, the health and the wealth grids that honey has gifted to your higher self. And then that gets installed. So you talk to your soul, your spirit guides, and then your heart, and those start activating you, right? And, and up leveling the the rest of you. It's not necessary to be, to have that as an Ascension Mastery member, uh, yet primarily the majority of the people are already our alumni from the Biro and Nasara. At some point in time, absolutely, we feel personally it would be essential. But you don't have to do that right away. So those links are below so you can browse that. And by the way, Biro and Nasara is about total abundance in all its forms. We don't lead off with financial abundance because that's the last thing is that expression of financial wealth because you've got to take care of the inner you and then your surrounding universe. So that's why we go through all of that, which then has that expression. We've had almost 300 testimonials and endorsements just for the Be Your Own Nasara, Nasara program alone. So the, um, the Ascension Mastery trial, I think we have it now. It's you know, uh, free trial for seven days, then it's 29 a month. So less than a dollar a day to be involved with this group. People are sharing their humanitarian projects, getting involved. They're sharing the dream work and writing it down. We've even had one lady, uh, Kim, who would, with full permission from Honey uh, to Honey and I, um, did the most recent Bureau Nasara. And she's been with us since one, two, and three. And she's able to connect with her daughter that passed 10 years ago and reconnected and saw her in a vision and brought her in. It was so beautiful. So there's a lot of amazing dreams that get shared in the experiences and things that go on in people's lives in the private signal chat. If you do, this is of honor. So honey and I aren't there. We don't have somebody that's there kind of, let me look in the chat and We're not we are policing. here. In Nobody's policing anything. And so this is of honor and it's amazing because this is an intentional community of peace, love, joy, and abundance um, of all these incredible souls from around the planet. So um, we hope you also enjoy the Ascension series here and uh, I'll leave it to honey because ladies first and then especially divine feminine and the Aquarian age, no less as well, guys. 
in the golden age that we're in. Well, we're in the time where the divine masculine is like in its healing process right now. So we kind of push the envelope, all of us ladies. And now what's coming in is the men are coming in. So it's a beautiful time to be doing these shows together and having that balance. Um, it's very important to heal the, both of those things within yourself because we both have feminine and masculine aspects, but the masculine is now healing and believe it or not, they've been more suppressed. So it's actually really important and beautiful that that's happening now so that we can work together. But I am going to, we're going to end this show and we will see you in the next one. And it was really a lot of fun, Brad. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Such a pleasure and honor. Yep. I thought it was a lot of fun. So bye everybody. Good.